about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. So the goodness of God is an advantage in my life. An advantage. An advantage. What is the advantage? Causing me to consistently realign so that I get to a point where my life becomes like the brightness of the sun. And people say, ah, ah, what happened? And you say, God has been good to me. Now, the carnal man would think what you are saying is, God gave me favor. You understand what I'm saying? Or God made a helper. Or like our dear sister shared, God made somebody to give me miracle. That's true. But what really happened was that he caused you to repent, to align so that his glory can better find expression in your life the riches of his goodness the next time you see stubborn and rebellious people in your house the key is not counseling the key is intercession for a solid encounter with the goodness of god i i got to hear a very touching testimony of some of these are young people who are very stubborn and the family collected a loan trusting God to help them to start a life and the the young boy and his friend true story they went to carry the car of the the car of the the friend's father you know all these boys that carry cars just to explore their their whatever it is and this one would drive and pack and give this one to drive and pack. They were changing. And then when it was the turn, you see how the devil, you see when the goodness of him, it was now the turn of the young boy who came from a poor family whose parents now collected loan thinking it would help them start life. And the young boy, it was his turn. He was driving a car of his friend's father and there came a big truck. It was a miracle that the boy survived. And the family said, I'm not hearing anything. Just get my car and bring for me. That was how they had to look for... I, these are people like counsel. They had to add an extra look for money because it got to the police station and all of that. You see that kind of thing? And you will see the boy, he will pass as if he gave his parents a word for taking first. The goodness of God is not there. That sense of remorse... He has put the family in, in trouble that it would take the prophetic to bring them out. Not business. This one, you can't come out just by business acumen. It's going to take God to come and lift you out. And yet you see the boys moving around. And I was just looking at him and he was looking around. No remorse. Look at armed robbers that kill people in the night. And by the next morning, they pass the same house they rob. And you see them smiling. During crisis, the people that kill people, do they die suddenly? They are alive. They pass a house that they know I'm the reason for the obituary in this house. And then they pass and laugh. They have not encountered the goodness of God. Let me tell you, it's not good to see somebody who has not partaken of the grace of the goodness of God. They are the people we call heartless, conscienceless. Like some of the corrupt people that steal the money of Nigerians. This is what they need. Are we together now? Number two. Hmm. 
Proverbs chapter 5, chapter 4, from 5 to 9. The second of the unsearchable riches is wisdom. Don't assume you know what I'm teaching. Just listen. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 5. 1, 2, read. Question, where? Get pure water. Where? Um, shop. Are we together? Get pounded yam and soup. Where? Restaurant. Get injection for malaria. Where? Hospital. Get wisdom. Where? It's not that I don't want to get it. Where is it? Where do they find it? It says, get wisdom. Then get understanding. They go together. All through scripture. You see this. Now, um, next year I'm going to be teaching you spiritual operations. And one of it will be how spirits work. It's, they are all dimensions of the Holy Spirit. But you will notice that there are classifications. There is an operation of the Holy Spirit that never works as a person. Do you understand? It, it must be in twin, working that way. It was the mystery that Jesus used in sending the disciples. He sent them two by two. Never sent them one. Everywhere you see wisdom, from Genesis to Revelation, you will see understanding going with them. And then sometimes they can form a tag team, knowledge, wisdom, understanding. Three of them. A threefold cord. That whoever stands in the middle, it's only God that can take him out. When you stand in the middle of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, a fortification has been built that nothing designed by man can break that defense. Stronger than the wall of Jericho. It says, get wisdom, get understanding. Forget it not. We're reading to verse 9. Listen carefully. Neither decline from the words of my mouth. Uh -huh. Forsake her not. The Bible personifies wisdom. And she shall preserve thee, love her, and she shall keep thee. Seven. Wisdom is the principal thing. It says, therefore get wisdom. And with all thy getting, see it now again, get understanding. Now see the benefits. Exalt her, and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor. You know what honor is? Causing men to discern, acknowledge, and celebrate your relevance. The Bible says wisdom is in the office of wisdom to bring honor to men. When thou dost embrace her, last verse, it says she shall give to thy head an ornament of grace. You said you are a king, but where is your crown? Wisdom is the holder of the crown. It says she shall give a crown of glory. It is through wisdom we find glory. A king without a crown is not a king. In ancient times when they defeated cities, they not only removed the crown of the king, they removed his whole head and walked with it back to their city. A, a symbol. The moment the king was captured and his head taken, nobody fights again. The battle was over. And now the Bible says that the wisdom shall give you a crown of glory. I can say I am a king, but where is my crown? That there is a spiritual blessing that holds the crown of those who will reign in this life. And the Bible says it is called wisdom. Proverbs chapter 8 is going to be a long reading. Be patient with me. Be patient with me. I want us to pray tonight. These are the systems that will make your life worth living will make your life meaningful by every standard proverbs chapter 8 doth not wisdom cry look at how merciful god is to the extent that wisdom now goes around looking the bible says wisdom is crying crying because of the foolishness of men and what their lives are becoming as a result of lack of accessing her it says an understanding are you seeing them together 
Wisdom is crying, understanding is adding her voice. Next verse. Reading to the end. Two. She standed in the top of high places by the way, in the places of the paths. Three. Let's hurry up. She cried at the gates, the place of exchange, where men enter and go out. Wisdom says, don't pass without me. Don't return without me. At the entry of the city, at the coming it at the doors. Four. Unto you, O men, I call. Wisdom is speaking. And my voice is to the sons of man. Oh, ye simple. Simple there does not mean humble. Simple means unwise. Meaning there is, there is no fortitude for comprehension. It says understand wisdom. And ye fools be of an understanding heart. Hear for I will speak excellent things. And the opening of my lips shall be right things. Seven. For my mouth shall speak truth and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. Eight. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness and there is nothing forward and perverse in them. They are all plain to him that understandeth and right to them that find knowledge. Receive my instruction and not silver. Hold on. If I give you wisdom and I give you silver, wisdom says, please don't be foolish to choose silver. Leave silver fast and come to me. And knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than rubies. Two things the Bible says are better than rubies. One wisdom, two a virtuous woman. And all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. Uh -huh. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence and find out the knowledge of witty inventions i hope we have the grace to continue the fear of the lord is to hate evil pride and arrogancy and the evil way and the forward mouth do i hate counsel is mine and sound wisdom i am understanding i have strength please read by the spirit this is what I want you to do. Now, wisdom is giving you a manifesto. Like a gentleman trying to ask a lady out. And he's trying to convince her and give her reasons to say yes to him. And he's saying, by me, kings reign. If you see any king reigning on earth, this is what enthroned him. Wisdom. You see any king reigning in business, in ministry. It's not just God. Wisdom. By me, kings reign and princes decree justice. 16. By me, princes rule and nobles, even all the judges of the earth. I love them that love me, and those who seek me early will find me. That means it's not cheap to find wisdom. He gives you a time to seek. Riches and honor. You see why he said you should not choose silver? Because riches and honor are with me. Yea, durable riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold. Yea, than fine gold. And my revenue than choice silver. I lead in the way of righteousness in the midst of the paths of judgment. Will soon be there. That I may cause those that love me to inherit. Talk to me. I cause those who love me to inherit substance there is not money substance there is results tangibility i will fill their treasures go ahead the lord possessed me so this is how creation happened through wisdom a house is built wisdom is saying the lord possessed me in the beginning of his way before his works of old next verse I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning, or ever the earth was. When there was no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no fountains abounding with water. Before the mountains were settled, before the hills was I brought forth. While as yet he had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest part of the dust of the world. When he prepared the heavens, I was there. 
when he set a compass upon the face of the depth when he established the clouds above when he strengthened the fountains of the deep when he gave the sea his decree that the waters should not pass his commandment when he appointed the foundations of the earth three more verses or two then i was by him ah, as one brought up with him and i was daily his delight rejoicing always before him rejoicing in the habitable parts of the earth and my delight were with the sons of men last verse now therefore unto me O ye children hearken to me O ye children for blessed are they that keep my ways wisdom one of the unsearchable riches that people can possess wisdom and he's saying even god used me for his results that means you are not going to be able to produce any kind and any dimension of result without wisdom what is wisdom the ability to correctly engage the mysteries of the kingdom not the knowledge of it not the comprehension of it the ability to correctly engage the mysteries of the kingdom is called wisdom what is wisdom the ability to use the word to produce supernatural results that's wisdom my brothers and my sisters i can show you scriptures upon scripture we are doing an introduction today supernatural wisdom that happened to men they rose on account of that wisdom let's look at one scripture first kings chapter 3 solomon god's portrait of wisdom you see that every once and again these men obtain one or more of these attributes and that's what they used to do business in the earth realm and they they dumbfounded the wisdom of men first kings chapter 3 and verse 9 we're reading to verse 13 from verse 9 solomon is praying now god is asking him what should i do and he says give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people that i may discern between good and bad for who is able to judge this thy so great a people verse 10 and the speech pleased the lord that solomon had asked this thing to 13 and god said to him because thou hast asked this thing and hast not asked for thyself what long life neither hast thou asked here it is again unfaithful mammon riches for thyself nor hast thou asked the life of thy enemies but thou hast asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment 12 behold i have done according to thy words let's see what god gave him i have given 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 i have given thee a wise and an understanding heart so that there was none like thee before thee neither after thee shall rise on any unto thee i have also given thee that which thou hast not asked both riches and honor so that there shall not be any among the kings you see that every time kings were there wisdom understanding go to chapter 4 from verse 29 go to chapter 4 and verse 29 chapter 4 first kings and verse 29 read with me please one two read and god gave go ahead solomon wisdom aha uh -huh, and understanding exceeding much and largeness of heart even as the sun that is on the seashore the manifesto the attributes of all this spiritual blessing next verse and solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the children of the east country and all the wisdom of egypt uh-huh for he was wiser than all men than Ethan the Ezraite, than Heman, than Kalkol, than Dada, all these guys 
are champions of wisdom they were noted for walking in strange dimensions of wisdom and his fame was in all nations round about 32 for he spake three thousand proverbs and his songs were a thousand and five worship team you see how songs come an encounter with the spirit of wisdom believe me one song that will cause the nations to bless you have you not seen that music artists write songs out of 50 they are like two three you know this is not human you know it by the way it lasts anything that is human has the characteristic of fading the moment time has no power over it it came from the realm of the spirit there are songs that were written when we were born and we are still singing it. There were songs that were written last month. We are tired of it. It tells you the dimension. It's not that there, there's something wrong with the song. The dimension from which the song came, if it is that which is of the earth is earthy. That which is of heaven is heavenly. 33. And he spake of trees from the cedar tree that is in lebanon even unto the high sop that springeth out of the wall he spake a lot he spake also of beasts and of fowls and of creeping things and fish i think there's one more verse and there came of all people to hear the wisdom of solomon from all kings of the earth does this look like gentiles shall come to thy light and they are king to the brightness of your rising meaning there is what a man can possess my brothers and my sisters you may be in a shrine or you may be in a, in a room that is made of mud blocks but kings will come when you possess what kings cannot buy they will come to you the last thing I'm going to do is to show you where wisdom stays because wisdom has a location Job chapter 28 from verse 12 true riches when God wants to help a man he exposes you to the unsearchable riches of Christ when you possess them you will look weak and frail my brothers and my sisters but when you begin to engage these systems of the kingdom your life becomes a wonder you see do you know why I'm taking our time to teach you these things <clears throat> so that you are not afraid of your results when you don't know the basis of the results that God gives you, even that result will make you afraid because you are not sure of the system of defense around it. Are we together now? But where shall wisdom be found? Remember I asked us a question. He said, get wisdom. And I said, where? So Job now, the man of wisdom, wisest, richest, Job, is having a conversation where shall wisdom be found and where is the place of understanding have you seen that they always go together next verse man knoweth not the price thereof neither is it found in the land of the living ah, where is the land of the living that means it's not found here it's not a commodity that is affordable in any market let no man deceive you that he knows where wisdom is found in this earth Mm -mm. it cannot be found the earth does not have the capacity to produce this it can produce Sophia human wisdom that is a derivative of trial and error and science but not the wisdom that comes from above the depth said it is not in me the sea said it is not with me that means all these things go back all these things are storage devices on earth they hide things the depth there are things that the depth keeps and those who know it can say bring it out that's why the prophet can stand and look at the ground and say oh earth he said let the people praise thee this earth is not barren let the people praise thee this earth will start yielding meaning that fruitfulness was hidden in the earth no wonder seed time and harvest was tied in the similitude of the principle of the earth the earth hides fruitfulness water hides abundance you read your bible everything the birds of the air and everything came out of water and so they said the depth said it is not with me the sea said it is not with me next verse it cannot be gotten for gold 
neither shall silver be weighed for the price thereof uh -huh. it cannot be valued with the gold of Ophir nor with the precious onyx nor the sapphire next verse the gold and the crystal cannot equal it and the exchange of it shall not be for jewels of fine gold no mention shall be made of coral or of pearls for the price of wisdom is above rubies the topaz of ethiopia shall not equal it neither shall it be valued with pure gold 20 whence then cometh wisdom and where is the place of understanding he listed all the choice places in the earth where we can find treasurable things and he says that wisdom is not there seeing that it is hid from the eyes of all the living and kept close from the fowls of the air destruction and death say we have heard of his fame hmm. look at this destruction and death also give testimonies that they say we have even us we are still surprised as we destroy people and kill people we have noticed that whoever possesses this mystery escapes us freely he said we have heard of the fame thereof with our ears that means destruction is a spirit not an event it's a spirit it can come upon a family and leave out its characteristics good understanding god understanded the way thereof that's a secret only god understands the way and he knoweth the place thereof hmm. no just just stop at 23 god understanded the way that means if you ever see any man with that dimension of wisdom who gave him that's why i told you it is it is a grace this is not something you walk education cannot give it no when men possess this dimension of wisdom god gave it to men is one of the unsearchable riches of christ solomon possessed it and he did wonders ordinary men have been granted access to this mystery and you can see a very young frail person but carrying something ancient that was with God at creation and wisdom is justified by her children the results show you that this is not human my prayer is that somebody will will catch a dimension of this grace the wisdom of God that you will arise with it my brothers and my sisters and you will see Sheba and her bounties come to you. That the things that you seek will come to you of their own accord. Believe me, Satan has deceived us to chase after things. God never designed that we chase after things. These are the commanders of dominion. When you possess them, it is impossible. There is a testimony even from the realm of the spirit. You don't have to plan to be great. You just possess this and watch what they do to you. The Bible says she shall bring thee. In other words, I can find wisdom from a small room. And wisdom says, follow me. Like Peter following an angel. I step into the place of great men and I say, what am I doing here? And wisdom says, this is where I live. Whoever possesses me will live with me. And you will eat the bread of kings. Because wisdom brought you there. But how many people desire the wisdom of God? So many people will tell you this is an interruption. There are many men of God that will not focus. Listen, many young Nigerians will not focus to listen to the wisdom of God. Just go, all these pastors, you are just lucky, you are anointed, you are anointed, that's all. Let me hustle my life. No, sir. No, sir. Except the Lord builds a house. They labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord watches over a city. The Bible declares that the watchmen watch it but in vain. He said it is vain to wake up in the morning and to sleep late in the night. Only to eat the bread of sorrow. But he giveth his beloved sleep. When God gives you wisdom, your eyes will see things. And it will surprise you what God will make out of your life. No man's anger can change what the wisdom of God does in your life. Let me tell you this. Learn this early in life. Whether people believe in you or not, it has no effect whatsoever on the forces of the Spirit working in your life. If you ever look at a man holding 
this unsearchable riches of Christ, your anger is just beginning. You will be angry till you die. It will not do anything. Because death is the last enemy to be destroyed. So if death testifies that I've hands up, then you two hands up quickly. That is one of the forces that was upon a pale horse in Revelation. One of the four horse riders. And it gives up and says, no, this one is above my power and above my dimension. Wisdom. Knowledge. Maybe let me give us one last one. The unsearchable riches of Christ. True riches. Are you ready? <laughs> the hearing ear listen access to the voice of God is one of the mysterious riches of the kingdom the Bible says he that hath an ear let him hear what the spirit say yet the spirit saith the bible says the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times are we together now some shall depart from the faith he says giving heed to seducing spirits and the doctrines of demons in the the spirit speaketh expressly that means one of the greatest you are at a point of advantage the hearing ear has nothing to do with the prophetic office it is a grace that god washes your ear with high eyesight so that you have the hearing ear is it not in your bible that thou shall hear a voice from behind saying this is the way why because there is a way that seemeth right if all ways were fair and right there would be no need for direction the hearing ear is a desperate prayer that everyone must cry unto god and say lord as i'm starting ministry give me the ear that hears let me tell you this listen i have studied the church in nigeria for many years i have studied the church in africa I have studied men and women of God and respectfully so I am amazed at the way people move this way when the Holy Ghost moved that way and their ministries ended overnight not sin not disobedience but that the Spirit of God is going because the anointing goes where the Spirit is going wherever the voice of God is that's where his power is so if God's voice and power is going left and you are going right, even if it's sincerely so, that's the end of it. My brothers and my sisters, let me tell you, your spiritual investment of 20 years can crash in one day if you are not given the gift of a hearing ear. You will appreciate this in years to come. The higher you rise in ministry, the more desperate you must cry. Moses said, don't send us from here. Moses was not a fool. With a rod in his hand, thy rod and thy staff, he said, no way. If you will know, I need to know you are there. Just because God said, move left yesterday, does not mean he will say, move left today. You must hear him part time. And there is a grace. I have studied this subject of hearing God properly. I can tell you, hearing god even prophets have problem with hearing god let me tell you something about hearing god the gift of prophecy the hearing that comes to prophesy is not the same hearing that comes to give you direction you can walk in accuracy i can look at your name call your number call everything and you will be surprised how stranded you will be to hear the voice of god 
most people don't know because many people are, are prophesying nonsense and lies the hearing ear I, I have a lot of friends and, and, and by God's grace I've met very powerful and accurate prophets and you will be amazed at how stranded they are waiting for God to speak on matters in their lives and yet the accuracy that comes from them makes you believe that oh they are just lying down no where was the hearing of the son of the prophet who died and his wife was about to be taken the children were about to be taken the man was a prophet read your bible and see how many prophets were stranded be careful let me tell you this one day i will teach you how human beings spiritually are like machines i will teach you how god works with men so that just because a man is prophesying and dispensing mysteries let me tell you sincerely okay let, let's put it this way let's use midwives right have you noticed that you can see a midwife who has been giving birth helping people give birth for years and then when she is now pregnant you can be so surprised at the difficulty that she goes through and you are wondering madam with this experience right after her giving birth that almost took her life she will display that mastery again in the hospital prophets cry it's amazing how confused prophets can be I will stand upon my watch and set myself upon the tower listen and I will hear what you will say unto me read your Bible and see people who missed very vital seasons in their lives although their gifts and their graces were still there when I learned this I learned this mystery from Dr. D.K. Olukoya. I was listening to him some years ago and he said something. He said that one of the greatest prayer you can pray is for a hearing ear. And I said, what is the meaning of that? And you see, if God helps you and you walk in a dimension of these graces, you must be careful. Because most times we see the flamboyancy on the gift and you can join men even to deceive yourself that just because that gift that prophetic operation is at work it necessarily means you yourself are accurate it's not true have you not seen people dying of infirmity and healing others what is the mystery behind it if, if you understand what i'm this thing is a very deep teaching that's why the bible says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling one of the unsearchable riches of Christ is a grace that can be given to men that you hear the sounds of the Spirit. You stand and watch and say, I've heard him. God is saying, go left. And everybody is saying, go right. Use common sense. You know you heard God. When you move left, after five years, people look at you. I have seen a bit of what hearing God can do. This ministry today, my brothers and my sisters, is proof that when men get these unsearchable riches, you won't go down. I'm not one person who comes all the time and says, God said, God said. I'm very careful. Now we have, especially we young people, we have abused God said. Anybody just comes and says, God said, just because you felt like God said. No. Or just because you were under the anointing and your mouth was talking. There are tongues of men. There are tongues of angels. There is the voice of God. Are you getting what I'm saying now? This is very powerful. You must learn it. There are times when I hear God speak. Everyone around me knows God has said. The voice of God comes with the spirit of faith. If it is God that you hear, the voice of God will always come with the spirit of faith. And the Spirit entered me when He spake unto me. It's impossible to hear God and remain and sit down there. No. 
here and there you can think you had God and he said go to Kano you can say I know I had Kano but tomorrow you just turn but you know God is very faithful he will allow you he knows we are students in the school of the spirit just keep playing around but the day his majestic voice lands on your life there is no power that can stop you let me tell you God is not always speaking God speaks but he's not always speaking a lot of people keep saying God is always speaking no sir are you always talking? At least you were created in his image. No. In the fifth day of the sixth month, the word of the Lord came. The word of the Lord came. The word of the Lord came. I've had occasions where God has spoken to me. And you have seen it. Even some of the messages. There are messages here that God gave me the titles. And I was, I've been surprised at how they seem to have carried an unusual grace because God said it. I stand here many times and I tell you this is what God is saying. And then you begin to see the strange things that he is doing. Let's be careful with this God said. Let's not reduce God to become a man. Now it doesn't mean that you can hear things. There is the knowing of the spirit. There is the witness of the spirit. They all look like voices. You have to be very deep in the spirit to separate between impulses and speakings. They are very different. Just because you had a spiritual communication does not mean God spoke. Remember that in the realm of the spirit, the voice is not the only way to speak. Light is a way of communicating. Love is a language. It can speak. So I can hear. That's the reason why regardless of how sure you think you are, stay for verification. When God spoke about Koinonia to start three days, we had set up the departments. God has granted us grace. I remember, if you remember that time, I was telling you God told me this and that and that. People will come from nations and people, this is what God said. I remember saying it that time. As at the time I said it, I said I saw CGC. This is not what I saw. I saw it broken, expanded. What is this that I'm seeing? I saw people standing, parking, filling the roads. And you no, know, like, as usual, every time you said God said, you need grace yourself to believe it. Because there are times that you just sit and say, okay, now I'm calm. It's like you, you smoked, uh, 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 what they call this thing. And so you went high and... To you, you can even say, look at the nonsense that I said. And you listen to your own message and say, hey, it's not exactly God. And God said, what are you saying? I'm the one speaking. We were preparing to start packaging our messages. I was thanking God and trusting and blessing him for the anointing he had given me. And just saying, oh God, thank you because you are going to use our media ministry as a very major stream of income to bless the ministry and lift us. And here comes the voice of God. No. In this season, you are not going to sell your messages. Facebook, that time, it was, I mean, it was even the first head of media's Facebook page. And he said, just carry your messages and put them on MP3, put them on Facebook. Don't put the videos, just the audios. And I will give it wings and it will go to the nations of the earth. That's it. My brothers and my sisters, when God says, sit back and watch the power that created the universe push things in your life there are things god has said listen to me there are things god has said when god talks notice that god doesn't care what you are seeing he tells you what you will do and he will do it so i stand upon my watch i'm not in a hurry to move god what are you saying in this season that's the reason why we have workers retreats. That's why we have our own retreats. A few weeks now, I'm going to start my end of year retreat. I'm telling you, you don't know how excited I am at that time. Because many of you have gone, no disturbances. I just shut my phone. And sometimes you need to get out of the busyness of life to hear God. Because there is, as it were, many voices, many sounds. And none of them is without significance. The voice of house rent and interrupt what God is saying. This spiritual haziness has a science. The encumbrances of life can push you, your child's school fees, your life, 
and God is saying fast for three days I say is it God is it a demon is it yes there are times that you check against the word of God but let me tell you there are times only God will help you because even you you don't know whether this is God again most people are not spiritual enough to get to this realm that's why they don't understand Years ago, I've shared with you the story. I had limited transport fare from Kaduna back to Zaria. And I took initiative and I went and ate yam and beans also with the money. I mean, why sit here till we die? Remember the four lepers. At least I should do one. I already know that it's only God that will know how to take me back home. And I believed with all my heart that I was acting by faith. And I did. And I stood in front of the junction near Waek office in Kaduna. And a car just stopped and the Holy Spirit told me, enter. Public transport. Oh. I told you the voice of God comes with the spirit of faith. It's until the act has been done. When you turn back on hindsight, you say, it has to be God who led me like this. When you are passing through it, you don't see the gravity of the faith you are exerting. It's when you look back and say, eh. I entered that car, I was just in rest. Rest. You are supposed to be afraid. You know how some of these our brothers are around and all of that. Until we pass Jaji. I knew there was no hope. You know, if it's 10 naira, you don't have, or 20 naira, you can beg. But I mean, when you don't even have up to 20 or 30 percent of what is the transport fare. And then they now said, everybody bring your money. And people were bringing them. But my God is my witness. My heart was at peace. This is what happens when it's God that is speaking. You leave him to be responsible for the word. I just obeyed. And that was how someone brought out, paid my transport fare. I dropped at flyover here, entered the bus, happy because I felt at least whatever it is, this one I'll pay. And someone knew me in the car and paid. I stopped in front of Northgate with the same money I was with there. It was a message. God was saying, look, I am God by myself. I can do it anyhow. There are times I can send a helper to give you money. There are times I say the helper is in the car. Enter and meet him there. It doesn't matter where the helper is. Believe God enough to go. There are times he parts the waters. There are times he says, walk on it. Let it just be that he sees him. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? You will need this for ministry. When God sent us to go for our crusade, we got up and moved like madmen. What you see today, my brothers and my sisters, is a product of the voice of God. You need the grace to hear God, not grace for prophecy. Lord, let me hear you. You, you, you. Look, you can pray and say, God, search my frail person. What is the most accurate spiritual mechanism of communicating your voice to me? Help me in that area. There are some of you that your hearing, you have not trained your hearing. If, you, if God speaks through your ears, you will not hear. And so you are going to say, Lord, give me a kind of dream that I will wake up and find myself standing. I will know that this one was not a dream. Let me tell you, if your heart is right, God will give you. There are dreams that no devil can tell you in your mind. Mind? How many of you have had what we call prophetic dreams? You know this one is not my mind. This is the voice of God. Unsearchable riches. The hearing ear, the seeing eye. One time, the storm was boisterous. I think it was Peter or Paul. And it was very obvious they were going to capsize. And all of a sudden, the hearing ear and the seeing eye. An angel appears to him and speaks to him and says, Don't worry, there shall be no loss. And he calmed the people down and said, Hey, relax. An angel has appeared to me. And he has said to me that there shall be no loss. And the Bible says that the storm calmed down and they went safely and arrived at an island called Melita. 
when you hear God you can sit in the midst of fire and be singing and people are saying excuse me sir this is fire you say no I'm sitting on the voice of God roasting someone by your left roasting another person by your right and acting as if the fire is not seeing you sooner or later you will need this message sooner or later you will carry destinies come darling you will carry destinies that are behind you and you will need to hear god on behalf of them one day you will have children one day you will have grandchildren and that day this spiritual blessing will be tested one day you will be a man of god with a crowd of people now all of you are waiting for the prophetic word next year whether i tell lies or not you will believe it's left for me and god and if i lie you will punish me are you seeing how risky it is many of you say we are praying for you but you know you are not even serious about what you are saying because you are saying apostle <laughs> the god that called you how you have been hearing him before let him help you just make sure you hear well for us you hear wrongly as a man of god for members and see the way their lives they will obey you against god just because you are fasting for a long time does not mean that your ears will hear it's a grace like earphone god will just put that spiritual earphone and start dictating this is how 2019 will be do this do that do this do that and he said god but like like Eliab, this is good and god says that's exactly the strategy satan wants to use next year use this route and you come out and he said people we are ready to go and they look at you and say ah just like that and god says don't mind them that's always how that's how the nation of israel was that's why moses was angry because he would suffer and hear god and come and talk to them and they would doubt husband please learn to hear god for your wife and your children otherwise one day god will be saying move left and you come with your degree and masters and phd nothing wrong you move left until life changes you in one position change your wife change the destiny of your children many of us sitting down here if our parents had god you shouldn't be at this level is that true there are a number of us who are going to pray many of us were victims of the lack of hearing many of our parents were called into ministry they ran away not hearing and the blessing that would have come to us if they obeyed god it would have been easy you would have been born again since four years but their disobedience now you got born again at 31 look how hard it is for you to learn the things of the kingdom the hearing ear is a grace man of god please whatever you will do with god i don't care what is not going on in your life if you can hear god hear god on who to marry hello hear god on who to marry you if God planned four children and you give birth to seven, you will take care of four. He supplies. He supplies. Follow his voice. I know you think I'm laughing. This is how our lack of spirituality has cheated people in the world. Before kings went for war, they would inquire of the Lord. Is it in your Bible? Shall we go? And God will say go. And give them the strategy. We have lost this in our generation. So we just step out and, and life just beats us into nonsense. What of relocating? A place where you want to be domiciled in. Where your family will be raised in. You don't hear God. I've told you that when the devil wants to destroy some people, he will give them visa. Visa to Germany. Visa to Europe. Just because the interview was easy doesn't mean it's God. There are times that Satan can give favor to kill you. There used to be a guy who used to drive me years ago, like maybe four or five years ago. He was desperate to go to Germany. I said, what is it for? I got to find out that he did one funny arranging thing where you do some kind of marriage 
with somebody there on contract then you come prepare papers and then fight divorce and then from there you have your papers and i don't know where that guy is now but he's a classic representation of grace to grass there are pastors that started well they kept navigating ministry well mighty men and women with anointing and then something happened in their life they didn't hear correctly or they didn't hear or they went based on the pride that results can bring no matter who you are if you trivialize the voice of god your head must touch the ground i'm telling you this it doesn't matter what level you get to in life and ministry please hear god as if you are just starting don't say because god has given me this my name is joshua selman god has given me results in ministry if you hear me talk to you like this i know what i'm saying lord should i pursue lord is this your will for me is this your will for me oh there's one conference that i have many great men and women of god some my friends around within this nation around and sometimes they have innocently felt apostle let's put forth a program let's put forth this and that and that people have come to tell me apostle what are you waiting for it's in the blueprint of the ministry to start sunday services what are you waiting for i remember one prophet of god very powerful prophet of god met me and said what are you waiting for start church and i just looked and said god bless you but this year I can't claim I hear everything but my goodness there are things this ear can hear we are going to pray and when it's time to pray you are going to cry if it means you laying hands on your ears to say Lord I am reaping the fruit of my not hearing you it's very clear that my life is the way it is now because I'm not hearing you are we together you need to hear God when you begin to hear multiple voices come down none of them is god let me give you a big secret i don't care what you are trying to hear the moment you are hearing multiple voices shut down none of them is god the majesty and the jealousy of god will not allow you to hear many things his voice is mighty upon the waters when you start hearing many voices rose magdalene mary Janet, shut down my friend you are not hearing god just shut down lord what is the devil trying to do you are going to abuja today next tomorrow you are praying and it's like you saw the map of kano and then it's like you now saw london <clears throat> shut down lord what are you saying please hear what i'm i'm teaching you this based on the word and based on experience most people who get into trouble ignore the voice of god consciously somewhere along the journey this is true for marriage this is true for jobs this is true for geographic locations there are men of god that just stand up and go somewhere and just say well after all i'm, I'm a believer in christ i love the lord we are going to plant this church here and they find out they are struggling for a very long time it was bishop oyedeko that was saying how that there was a time that they started the church in ghana living faith was blossoming doing very well and they started the church in ghana and there was so much struggle after like four was it five years or six years or so the increase was not there and he was struggling everything he said he went there by himself to preach and still nothing worked and he went back and said god what is the problem and god said i am not there and he said shut it down immediately There are some of you from this message tonight you need to go and shut down a lot of things in your life because if you check it you will find out there's nothing wrong if you thought it was god you are a student in the school of the spirit oh i thought this business was god but now i'm hearing this is not god oh. i thought that it was god that said i should start the ministry i remember years ago when my well friends and all of that you know not really close friends will meet me and say apostle with the kind of grace you have start a tv ministry start this i told you about pfn when we had our first crusade pfn was willing to give me pastors and give me an auditorium to say start start a church we need you be careful not every good thing is god things don't have to be bad for you to leave them sometimes they can be good they are just not god
There was a time I was preparing, taking my bath years ago. I had a meeting. I don't know if it was in Kaduna or one of these places. I had prayed, fasted, prepared a powerful message. As, as I was taking my bath, all of a sudden, my peace, I will come to that, will discuss peace. Peace as one of the mysteries in the kingdom to bail men out. The stubbornness of men will not allow them understand how the peace of God works. He said he will speak peace. Peace is a voice. Peace can warn you and say you are landing in hot water. Peace can tell you, man of God, this association you are joining is what will destroy you. It doesn't mean they are fake. It doesn't mean they are not of God. But this association is what will bring down your grace. Man of God, be careful. Peace. That's why I told you that these are the systems by which the saints dominate. So you can see that you can have a dream. And in your dream, you saw a maker dying. But in the physical, it will never happen because there is a mystery that shields him. The dream you saw was the intention of Satan. But there is a fortification of a mystery. You can have a dream and see Joshua Selman dying in a motor accident and start praying and say, hey, so this is how our apostle will die. <laughs> I, I guarantee you it will remain as a dream. You don't know what is covering this man that is standing. It's not pride. Do you know how many times death has tested me? Uh, make him ma, make him ma, make him ma. Make him ma, make him ma, make him ma. You have been unfaithful not faithful with unrighteous mammon who shall commit to your trust the true riches of the kingdom these are the mysteries we do ministry with these are the mysteries by which kings rise and you look at a man and you see the wonder that his life emits and you are saying my god how is this thing working my brothers and my sisters these are the systems paul said me who i am the least of all the apostles was this grace given that i become a communicator of the unsearchable riches i have learned these things and they have helped me they have delivered me from evil that prayer lead us not into temptation but deliver us one hearing from god can deliver you and deliver your children's children our parents went head on some of them were the colleagues of some of the men of god in nigeria today and had they continued hearing god well they would have given us a good footing but the inability to hear i have seen pastors men of god that i knew years ago men of fire and seeing them and their shadows of themselves how can a man's yesterday be better than his tomorrow because of one of these spiritual blessings no wisdom some of us have lost destiny helpers that can change our lives because of the wisdom to be given to navigate friendship are you ready to pray tonight these are the keys by which we read my brothers and my sisters look at me forget about cars truly believe me forget about houses forget about all this fake life up and down when you possess these things you will tame life it will be at your command you will watch yourself with shock and wonder there are about eight of these true riches we'll preach it in a series next i just felt in my spirit to introduce it tonight the spiritual blessings that constitute an advantage in a believer i like you in the next our time is gone but in the next five minutes find a corner find somewhere and cry to god i'll just allow you instrumentally just set the atmosphere for us everyone pray everyone pray I'm
unsatiable, the unsatiable, unfathomable riches of God. Partake us of the riches of His goodness. Partake us of the riches of His wisdom. Partake us of the riches of spiritual understanding. Partake us of the hearing ear, the seeing eye, the hearing ear, the seeing eye. Lord, help my ministry. Lord, help my business. Help my family. Let me hear the sounds of the Spirit go down. Now, we are going to pick just one of all of these that I listed. The grace to hear you. Listen, I like you to cry with all your heart. Lord, grant me the grace. I'm tired of thinking it is you when it is not you. Let your voice be mighty upon the waters. Speak to me, O God, concerning ministry. Speak to me, O God, concerning family. Just one more service for the year. Lord, activate the speakings of angels. The angel came and told Daniel, he said, I am come to give you understanding. There are angels that are sent. I like you by faith to activate their ministry. The angels, the ministering spirits, bringing accuracy, bringing direction. Ha 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 
Aleluya. When God cleanses your ears and helps you listen, listen. The voice of God will take away wastage from your life. Wastage. There are many men of God whose ministry's finances have gone down because they didn't hear God. They organized conferences. God was not in it. Yes, souls were saved. Yes, lives were transformed. There are many people who should not even have churches. But they thought they had. This is not to scare you, but I'm being sincere with you. Happy is the man whose ears can hear the voice of God. Because, you see, we live in an arrogant society where people and their pride will mislead you away from God. This, our world is very proud. You see people who don't know where they are going, but they make you feel stupid for staying where God said you should stay. And if you are not careful, they will rob you of the courage to stand until you fall with them. If I followed what people said, if I followed what people wanted to do in my life, if I followed what people wanted me to do, I would have crashed in life and crashed in ministry. Some of us, after Koinonia, listen, I, this we have one more service. Maximize it. Are we together? Some of us, after this service, you, you should go and find somewhere, even if it's for one hour in the night, to say, Lord, this issue of hearing you, you have to tidy this in my life. Everything you claim God told you, by now we know he's not the one that said it. Don't feel ashamed, but you must go back and say, what is this? families have died they have lost loved ones simply because people could not hear the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter days the spirit speaketh expressly expressly god who in sundry times and diverse manners spoke to us through the prophets had in this last day spoken to us through his son the word that he has appointed heir over all things God is still speaking speaking to men and women and by speaking is not just you need to know you need to pray that God purifies your dreams some of us our dreams have been hijacked by forces let me tell you many things God wanted to tell you in dreams but there are powers that have hijacked the dreams to the point that now you don't even trust it yet dreams and visions it says I have multiplied visions I have spoken in similitudes even by the prophets these are all spiritual channels of prophetic communication let's use one more minute to speak that the blood of god the blood of jesus speaks over your dreams over your discernment and say lord i crush the voice of wickedness let there be a purification of the dreams of the vision a purification I cause manipulations of dreams and visions by the gates of hell confusing men confusing women confusing men of God confusing destinies we crush it in the name of Jesus all 
all the major camps christian camps in this nation that belong to the fathers of faith i've had the privilege to be there to walk around the length and breadth and being in those places i said kai it is good to hear god it's good to hear god i've seen the areas in my life where i had god and i've seen the excellency and the blessings of the results in my own life and in effect the life of others are we together now we have a series this is just an introduction but please let me challenge you when you go back especially this issue of hearing god do you know why many people are small in our generation i will tell you why because we follow instincts instincts brain work oh this is a b c this is efg god does not take away your intelligence but you see a spiritual man the bible says that you do not know the wind blow it where it listeth you cannot tell where it is going or where it is coming he says so is one who is led by the spirit you need an experience of a hearing ear and a seeing eye there are encounters i have had and god has spoken to me through them i will die believing it if i get to heaven and i find out i'm wrong i will apologize with all humility but for now they have become my convictions they drive my life there is no gate of hell that sustains the power to derail that focus because of the power of what was heard and seen if you do not hear the voice of god one day you will leave ministry if you do not hear the voice of god one day you will look at your wife and say are you sure you were supposed to be the one i'll marry or you look at your children you will look at your loved ones one day you will just commit suicide out of frustration but i know whom i have believed and i am persuaded father tonight we thank you you have granted us access to know that there are unsearchable riches in christ there are systems of advantage that you have designed that when we walk in them our lives become invincible lord i cry tonight i have introduced this deep mystery that you have shown me to your people in the simplest form possible lord i pray that you proceed with the quickening of these teachings grant unto your dear people access even to deeper understanding of these things lord that on the strength of these truths we will rise like an edifice and bring you glory and compel our generation to do same we thank you for your grace tonight we love you for the abundance of your hand upon our lives in the name of jesus christ amen and amen thank you please be seated a few minutes and we're out of hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you